On this episode of China Uncensored, I'm gonna buy the New York Times, says crazy Chinese millionaire. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. I have some bad news. Apparently, being fabulously wealthy does not mean you're a good person. In fact, it might mean you're corrupt. I know, who would have thought? And this is the hard lesson that I learned from Chinese multi-millionaire Chen Guangbiao. He made his fortune as a recycling tycoon. Uh, wait a minute, China has a recycling program? I admit, I was won over by the guy at first. I mean, do you remember the time when he handed out cans of fresh air on the streets of Beijing? I mean, that's just like in Spaceballs. He also does cool stuff like refer to himself in the third person. Chen Guangbiao's and sing songs he wrote himself at press conferences. That's exactly the same kind of thing Chris Chappell would do, if anyone ever invited him to a press conference, that is. I mean, just look at the credentials on this guy's business card. Most influential person in China, moral leader, earthquake rescue hero, most charismatic philanthropist, environmental preservation demolition expert. And when it comes to his philanthropy, he says he does it all to give back to the Communist Party. Carnegie gave back to God, I give back to the party. But the biggest joke to come from Chen Guangbiao was when he said last week he wanted to buy the New York Times. Because, as he wrote here, the New York Times does not have objective coverage of China. And he wanted to change that. That's why the English and Chinese version of the New York Times website are blocked in China, because they're biased. I mean, case in point, here's the number of in-depth articles exposing the wealth of former Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao's family. How many does the New York Times have? And how many does China's state-run Global Times have? Clearly biased. I mean, if it was an important story, don't you think China's own state-run media would cover it? I mean, that's why you have state-run media, so the state can tell you what you need to know about the state. Unfortunately, before I could get my letter off to Chen asking him to buy off my clearly biased show, word came out that the New York Times was not for sale. Who would have thought? Now Chen is saying he wants to buy an old section of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge that was damaged in a 1989 earthquake instead. The demolition project would be worth $240 million. You know, Chen, if you're looking to buy a bridge, I also happen to own one that I'd be willing to part with. Don't check with anyone. I definitely can sell that bridge. Now, you might be asking yourself the reasonable question, why would he come to the U.S. and say he's going to buy the New York Times when he obviously wouldn't be able to buy the New York Times? Well, it's because once he got all the publicity from that crazy announcement, he was able to make his other announcement. On January 7th, sandwiched in with the New York Times thing, Chen did a little karaoke, cautioned that we can't trust Japan, and, oh my god, what monstrosity is that? Uh, graphic image warning. That was part of Chen's big announcement. He's offered to foot the $2 million plus bill for reconstructive plastic surgery for those two Chinese ladies. According to the press release, they are a daughter and mother burned while participating in a Tuesday, January 23rd, 2001 self-immolation protest in Tiananmen Square. Oh, this is so shady. You know what's going on here? This is the craziest propaganda I've ever seen. The Chinese regime is really good at this. So, January 23rd, 2001, a group of people light themselves on fire in Tiananmen Square. Chinese state-run media say they were Falun Gong practitioners who thought they'd go to heaven for it. They play that story every day for an entire year on every media outlet throughout China. Since 1999, the Chinese regime had been brutally persecuting Falun Gong practitioners, and public opinion was overwhelmingly against the persecution. But then they play this story of wackos burning themselves to go to heaven every day for a year, and public opinion turns against Falun Gong. Problem is, the immolation, it's been thoroughly and repeatedly debunked. In fact, the evidence put out by CNN, The Washington Post, The Boston Globe, Human Rights Watch, well, let's just say the evidence from an awful lot of independent journalists and human rights organizations make it seem that what's most likely is that the whole thing was staged by Chinese authorities. Oh, and by the way, Falun Gong does not teach that you should burn yourself to go to heaven. So now you have Chen bringing these two disfigured women on stage whom, given how tightly the Chinese regime controls the story, are impossible to verify if they were in fact even there in 2001. Some shocking photos are taken and because most of the reporters at this press conference are local New York City reporters and not China experts, numerous articles are written that mention the self-immolation as an accepted fact. 
By leading off with the whole, I'm going to buy the New York Times, and doing it during a slow news time, Chen got maximum publicity for this charade. And the Chinese regime got a chance to justify its persecution of Fong Gong overseas by making Fong Gong look scary. Hey, it worked for them in 2001. So why, 13 years later, is Chen suddenly putting this controversy back in the limelight? Well, this is the second time in the past few weeks that Falun Gong has been making headlines in China. At the end of December, Li Dongsheng, associate of Zhou Yang Kang and head of the 610 office, a party organization set up to completely eliminate Falun Gong, was fired and put under detention. That's widely seen as the next move by Chinese leader Xi Jinping against his rival Zhou Yang Kang. More on that here. So, could Joe's people be banking on the immolation hoax having the same kind of slandering success in the West as it did in China? Because Falun Gong is a hot-button issue in China, you can't just talk about it. You need permission. Even foreign journalists in China can't really talk about it. They know they'd get kicked out of the country for trying. The fact that Chen was able to come to New York and make this announcement means he had someone's permission. I mean, if he really cared about helping victims in China, why not Tibetan self-immolation victims? Why not Falun Gong practitioners left disabled from horrific torture in labor camps? Falun Gong is something that the Chinese regime usually does not like making news unless they dictate what that news says. The fact that it's now making headlines means someone in the party wants it that way. You know what, Chen? You're no longer my most beloved Chinese role model. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Be sure to check out the Facebook and Twitter page. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.